Hello, Ed and Dude with Pinball Mayhem here. Uh, we were recently on the Dead Flip stream helping Jack work on his homebrew game. Uh, I was able to debut uh, my new pinball rotisserie, got a lot of questions about it, how it was put together. So uh, we thought we'd make a, a video and kind of show you the details and give you some measurements. So if you want to build something similar, give you kind of a guide. I'm not going to give you a piece by piece. Uh, measurements, but uh, kind of give you a general idea. If you can weld, cut, and grind, you'll be able to build something like this. Oh, this is the uh, pinball rotisserie in its storage location. I designed it to be wall mounted and uh, be able to swing out of the way. That way, I got my bench free and it doesn't take up a lot of space underneath. So, uh, to bring it down, just rotate that uh, chunk of wood. And it sits on uh, two chains that are suspended from the floor joists. Uh, the beauty with that is I can take an S hook and if I want to move it up a little bit, I could, I could just hook the chain, move it up to higher position. I have it set so it clears the workbench by about a half inch and uh, locks. Now right now it is in raw metal. It is going to get painted uh, once I get all done. I want to run it for a uh, for a, a month or two, make sure everything's fine. Once the weather gets a little bit nicer outside, it's going to get painted and uh, be a nice color. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go through the parts and uh, kind of show you some of the features of it. So G I made this big enough, uh, went to pinballmakers.com, looked at their list of all the playfield sizes. I wanted to make it wide enough and long enough so I could fit most playfields in here. Uh, and uh, be able to have like a stern with stuff coming out the back or ramps that go through the back box so there's room to be able to work on it. Uh, I need to work on a giant mnemonic and I'm going to have to take it apart. So general, my, in, my uh, tube is one inch tubes that I made this out of. My inside width is 28 inches wide and long is 54. Now. Uh, if you're not working on a lot of, if you don't ever plan on working on wide bodies, I would recommend making it a little bit narrower uh, because uh, then it's going to give you a lot more table space. Uh, there's, a, there's two main disadvantages of the way I built this. One being is because of the, the width, I have to have it a little higher. It's about a half inch higher than my previous rotisserie. It makes it a little bit more difficult to load, but uh, it's for, I'm happy with it. I can always uh, uh, stand up on something if I have to. The other uh, disadvantage is it's one sided. That's because the wall mounted. I could I can still rotate it pretty quickly and be able to get to the other side and work. I don't think it's going to be a limitation because I'm used to working on the bench, light right here with my rotisserie anyways. Uh, the uh, when you get to this side, we have two half-inch square tubes. The bottom one is welded in line with the inside of the one-inch tube, and the top one I have drilled three holes and bolted it through. This is to clamp on the play field you have the hooks. This is designed, uh, I kind of looked at some of the stern rotisseries where they're bringing it in and out real quickly. They have little little uh, clamps that they pop on. Well, I wanted to make it more universal. This bar gives me the ability to uh, take these bolts out and probably not quite as quickly as stern, but uh, for a home rotisserie pretty quickly. Take, take these three bolts out and um, when you drop a play field in you would actually clamp the two clamps in there. So, uh, with the three bolts you tighten them down it's going to give uh, gives a lot of uh, flexibility and for what we're doing I, I, would, I don't need to cut a groove uh, I don't have to worry about it sliding. It's pretty good. If you're working in a situation where it was going to slide, you tighten this down with a wrench. But uh, for sake of the video, I'm just quickly throwing it in. Uh, if you're worried about it sliding, you could always make a block on the side of the, uh, of the uh, play field to hold it in place. That's, uh, that's how it, uh, you drop the play field in, which is going to go to the back side where I have these weird brackets. This is the one thing with my, with my setup where I'm going to have to constantly involve it. This comes in and actually the, the pivot bracket that the uh, play field sits on, it rolls on when you drag it in and out, it'll key into here and it'll drop in. So when I want to put a play field in, I would just drop it in, put it on, on the end, bolt it down, I'm good to go. This is only for Stern, Data E starting with Hook and uh, going to all the newer games. So Data E, Stern, and Sega, I should be able to be good for 
I think over 20 years. Hoke was 92, so that's going to be uh, quite a few years of pinball I, I, can, I can put in here. Now I'm also going to be working on, uh, I mentioned giant mnemonic, Bally Williams. I'm going to make a pivot that locks in with either the pivot bolt that those lock into. I'll have to make a set of these for each, each style. I'm also going to end up making a, just a regular uh, rail uh, uh, angle iron that's going to bolt in on this side and on this side it's going to be clamped in with a, with a C clamp or a clamp so that I'm going to just put a plank on without hooks and be able to work on it until I get the hooks on there. That's as it evolves, as I make accessories for it, as I need them. Uh, that's, uh, the, the bottom here is made out of one inch tube steel. And this is just some scrap I had. I, um, I think it's an inch and a quarter tube steel. Notice I angle cut the back so that uh, I don't have to worry about hitting the workbench when I rotate it. And just a quarter inch bolts to make it nice and tight. Uh, I do plan on eventually getting some socket head bolts so I can use the same inch and quarter. Good. Uh, so I can use the same uh, uh, Allen wrench for everything. So I welded the frame up square, and to make my pivots, I wanted to try to I wanted to try to use stuff that was uh, off the shelf. Why reinvent it? Why I had to sit there and find find lathe or or make the right parts? So the pivot point here is actually a tractor uh, category one top link. It's just a this is just the pin that you would pull. And uh, this is you know, your standard tractor uh, hold your top links in. So I, I got that from, uh, we have a fleet farm, but maybe you know, look around for an implement store if you want to make something similar. This is what they call a category one to category two top link sleeve. Every time you go up in categories, the holes get bigger, it gets more heavy duty. So if you had a category one top link pin you had to use in the category two implement, you'd have to buy one of these. I bought three. That's my bushing right here. So I didn't have to sit there and find the right bushing. This is a three-quarter inch rod, pre-nickeled. Uh, we welded it on here, so when I paint it, I'll just paint it up to there. Keep this, so I'm not going to have paint gumming up my uh, pivot in the future. And I, the extra one is a good spacer. Here's my lock. Here's a little bit more of that scrap inch and a quarter that I got. Uh, an eye bolt with uh, some uh, decent uh, chain. And then we're going to go back to the pivot that's on the wall. This is... Uh, I bought some wheels for a uh, Tron, a Midway Tron card rack cabinet that uh, needed, uh, the wheels were just shattered. So I found some nice steel wheels. I didn't need the bracket from the wheels, so I took the wheel off, ground it a little bit narrower. It fits in the Tron cab, uh, arcade game. Perfect. Save these. Now, <laughs> just drill the hole out to fit the three-quarter inch bolt, uh, three, uh, three-eighths inch bolt, and I got a, uh, a wonderful wall pivot pre-nickel, don't have to paint it, don't have to worry about it. And that's just bolted right into the, uh, into the wall, the cement in the wall with anchors. Now the, uh, that's kind of uh, the standard pivot. It pivots pretty easily, but the fun part is over on the other side where we have the actual lock. This is get, so on, on that side I showed you that I had the category one to two sleeve and I had another sleeve with a lock. Well in this place I ended up getting a three quarter inch bushing. And this is a uh, same thing in the implement area uh, for F Fleet Farm. It's just it's a sprocket that allows you to um, you know build your sprockets as you go. So if you have an implement that needs a sprocket, you buy the hub, you buy the sprocket for the right teeth, you weld them together and uh, you put a keyway. So I used a Dremel and I cut a half moon keyway, a woodruff key, and put that in the in the shaft here. Uh, this is a 16 tooth sprocket which is cool because then I have 45 degrees, or uh, not 45 degrees, I can lock it at 90 degrees and I got two locks between. And this is a, a nice uh, linear latch. I picked it up on Amazon. It was just a, um, uh, a nice over center latch as I call them, but I think they, they have a more official name. Well, I'll find the link and put it in the uh, video notes. The, I, I like it a lot. I, if I were to get it again, I would uh, get a heavier duty one on the front because I got a little bit of deviation. You can see right there where it moves. Um, so I think uh, for now, because I don't need it to go, yeah, let me use my other hand. I don't need it to go that farther than that back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a bushing and weld it to the plate. That way, if I just take this nut off, I could slide it out. But uh, a bushing would keep it from going up and down. Cool part is it locks really quickly. So, go 
90 degrees, just like that. It's very, it makes it very easy to work. I don't have to mess with pins on both sides, anything like that. I need to, I did a lot of work at like a, this angle. It just makes it easiest to lock it in and, uh, and be able to turn it. And this is just uh, all lined up. And that's, uh, I took the original bolt out and I welded a piece of round bar on to lock in. I could also take the bolt and grind the head uh, to a, a shape here. It spins real freely, which is nice. It makes a wonderful noise. <laughs> and uh, to lock it back up, all I do, I can leave those in there for now, leave this unlocked, and I'm just going to put it out of the way. Out of the way, on to the next project until I need it again. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and check out our other videos and playlists.